everybody. Happy and New Year, Bright City Church family. Welcome to Bright City Church Online. This yes. is Sunday Live. Um, I'm Ian and this is my wife, Rachel. <laughs> We're pastors we? of Bright City Church. Yes, and, um, great that you've joined us It's this lovely morning. to be our here. Our first service in 2021. It is our first. Yes, it is, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. We're excited about all that's ahead and so glad that you managed to join us this morning and tune in. Welcome, yes. everybody. Want to say hi, Scylla. Lovely to have you with us. Good to see you, Scylla. Lovely. Hi, Paula. Hi, Karen and Jeremy. Yeah. Hi, Sarah, <laughs> Simba and Tanya. Hi, Stephanie. Lovely to have you with us. Good morning, Hi, Rick guys. and Ali. Yeah. Hi, Angie B and Angie D. Both the Angies <laughs> are tuning in. And thank you for saying hi. Hi, Bill, if you're there. Yeah. Hi, Colin and Karen and Richard and Christiana. Yes. Lovely to... Hi, Jimmy. Yeah, Lovely to, to have you, you with us. Good morning, Adela. Hi, and Millie and Norman. Justin. And uh, <laughs> John Dongmei and Enoch in China. Thanks for joining us. Let us know where your, um, someone said Soup Sunday. Is it really Soup Sunday? <laughs> That's Paula. Well, if I you want to make know. a soup well, at home, please go ahead. Who remembers Soup Sundays? <laughs> Weren't they good? Good morning, Glorious Victory. What, what a name, eh? Glorious Victory. Glorious I mean, Victory. You know. Good morning. Yeah, that's that's a great like. declaration. Morning, Charlene. <laughs> morning, Charlene. Thanks for joining us. Happy New Year. Yes, Happy we New Year. We know the God who says, I make all things new. Yes. Wow. Lord, we <laughs> thank you that you are a wonderful God. Yeah. Thank you for your love yes. in our life. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for hope in yep. you. Thank you for all the new things. Thank you for this new year. Yeah. And um, I pray in Jesus' name that you would bring a fresh, mm. a new yeah. download, a, an anointing today mm. on every yeah. person who's joined together. We come together yes. to be with yes. you, to receive yes. from yes. you. Yes, Lord, we welcome you here, Lord. We love your yes, presence. Lord. You know, even though we're not in the same room together, you know, we carry, you know, your spirit and spirit to spirit as family of God. You know, we can connect, Amen. can't we? to our heavenly father even though we're not together physically and i just pray right now that you really feel the presence of god wherever you are in your rooms as we start this new year ahead and good morning to simon and rachel marshall good to have you with us good morning, good morning pastor david and joyce good morning uh charlene yeah. have we said good morning <laughs> yes we have said good morning. everyone's double, double kind of joining for... us this yeah. morning no it's <laughs> wonderful <laughs> So, yeah, it is so good. It is so good to be together. Yeah. Um, what can we say? So what about New Year's resolutions? New Year's, New goals. Year's goals. What are you, you know, we, we love to start yeah. out and these are good. Yes. This is a new year. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I know we've just said that. But, you know, the year, the new year is very significant, yeah. actually, in God's eyes. Yes. You know, it's not just um, something that man has fabricated or made up. He is the one who mm -hmm. set the the celestial cycles yeah. of the sun, the moon yeah. and everything. And the year comes around and the year comes around. And the yes. Bible often says in the year such and such, in the year yeah. that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord yeah. in this year, yeah. this year that God has ordained and mm. set for you and yeah. me. What are you believing yeah. for? What is God going to yes. bring? It is significant. It is a new year for a yes. new day, yes. a new anointing for you, a new level, yeah. a new something new. Just believe. Let's enter the new year. Cool, I'm preaching here. Let's are, enter the new year with a fresh faith in God. Yeah, Amen. And, and in fact, we had that scripture, didn't we, that we started with a little bit. We, we spoke about it a little bit even on, on the New Year's Eve celebration where we were saying, behold, the former things have come to pass and new things I declare, says the Lord. Before the spirit forth... If, before they spring forth, I tell you of them. That's what God's going to do. He's going to tell you of the new things. And when we talk about new things, it doesn't mean that the old was wrong or anything. It's just the old has finished. And then we start something new because God, you know, he loves to bring in the new, doesn't he? he likes yes, to he does. Do new, new things. He so does, This yeah. is not just an, any old day. 
for us, is it? Another day. This is a new day for God. Yes. You know, all the days of my life have been written before even word came to pass. So those days, this is a new day of things that God has planned for you and mm. for I. It's exciting. Okay. God is the God it. of the fresh. And uh, as is. Simon says, believing mm. God for fresh hope, yes. releasing fresh yes. hope. Amen to that, that's Simon. A, that's a great... Yeah, he's the God of the fresh, this fresh manna. Every day was the fresh, yeah. the new, yeah. the fresh, not the old, um, not the old wrinkly stuff. <laughs> good to good see you. Good morning, Rachel. <laughs> and, and Esther, good to have you, Jeannie, with us. Well done, everyone. Everyone's sort of coming on board now, probably getting out of bed, stretching. Maybe you've had a busy, long week. I don't know. <laughs> and uh, it's been cold. I know that. <laughs> so we've been talking about, yes, what, what would your, those words God has given me for this year is restoration. The words, yes. restoration and increase for Vinny's Diner and the Food Bank. Who's going to say amen to Justin? Yeah. I say amen to that, Justin. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Amen. And Karen Increase Tom, and put, multiplication. Yes, being refreshed and renewed. Absolutely, Karen. Love that. In his presence, we become fresh and refreshed and renewed. I was actually meditating on that little passage of scripture. Good, Good morning, Renette uh, Jacques in <laughs> France. Lovely to have you with us. And um, oh dear, I'm trying to <laughs> pull some French out of my brain. And it's not working. <laughs> Don't try. But, uh, bonjour, ça va? <laughs> and uh, amen, amen, amen. Okay, so Adele's put trust in God for answers to prayer. Absolutely. We always believe that God is going to answer us and we trust in him and we don't put our trust in anything else. You know, I always find trust is a continual journey in, in one spiritual walk with the Lord. That we it have is. to keep learning to trust him and we trust do. him. We do, yes. We more, more levels of trust yeah, more and more depths of trust. of trust. Absolutely. And uh, thinking about, you know, your New Year's goals and resolutions, you know, we were, we were driving in this morning and yeah. could see all the joggers out, you know, <laughs> sort of with their new lycra on and, and they, you know, great. And I was well done, well done, well done. And um, even myself, I, I, um, I got a present for Christmas from Dan. He, he got me this lovely of, of a pair of bicycle panniers to go on the back of the bike so I can take my stuff into work. I've got no excuse. So I've got to be commuting in on the bike and keeping fit. But listen, folks, I, I was reminded about, you know, the goals and, and these things about resolutions. Mm. The Bible says, train yourself yeah. to be godly. Yes. For physical training is of some value. So yeah, you know, Physical training is good. And those of us who are, you know, getting those physical goals, we well do done. need to look after ourselves. <laughs> we and do. well done. And let's persevere in those. It's of some value. But, but godliness has mm. value for all things, holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. Make sure that yeah. your goals and your yes. resolutions and your yes. determinations yes. are, you know, spiritual goals, yeah. Spiritual disciplines, yeah. you know, I'm going to read the word. I'm yeah. going to, I know I've been hearing people, I'm going to go there's through the lots, Bible in yeah. a year. Come following, on, guys, the, there's, there's, there's re accesses, there's resources and the things we can Bible. use, the audio Bible and other things. Yeah, so um, Karen's put that, reading the Bible in a year. <laughs> yes. There we go. <laughs> this is the year. That's Jeremy. That's actually. Jeremy. Yeah, Jeremy. Come Wonderful. on. We're right behind Bible you. In a year. Yes. Let's uh, let's join Jeremy. Who's going to join so Jeremy? Good to have, uh, you know, no these more goals. fat tum in 2021. <laughs> is that does that rhyme? No more fat tum in 2021. You know, I, I always journal everything. Can I always start? I've got my I've got my new journal. It arrived this week. As I start a fresh page, and I always write down, we're just really just giving thanks to God for what He's already done, and um, and and I love to do that. And I spent just a day of really just writing down and saying, "Thank you, God, for everything that You've done, that You're so faithful to us, and um, the things that You've accomplished and worked in us, and just the small things, you know, food on the table, shelter, you know." heating hot water in the town I mean I was writing all sorts of things down I think it was like four pages long by the time I was just like you know just pouring out our thanks it's good to start the year by just being thankful to God and Lord we just Amen. want to thank you yes Lord, thank we you do. Lord thank you for being so faithful to us thank Amen. you Lord for getting us all through 2020 and Lord we just continue thank to you, pray Lord. for thank those you, who have not been well yes. and uh, Lord we speak healing over them right now in Jesus name we declare yes. that you be healed if you've been ill and I know that 
that there are still a few that are, are not well at the church you know join together folks um family of god let's continue to pray for all the members of the church who've not been well we're believing for full yeah restoration. we lift up those right now who have been diagnosed yeah. or, with or the, who yeah. are suffering with the with symptoms COVID. of COVID-19. Yeah. And yes. there are some within our church family. Yeah, we're praying. God knows who they are. Yeah. Let's lift them up right now yeah. together. And we speak healing yes. over every member yeah. and friend of Bright City Church yes. right now who is suffering mm. in any way. Be healed. Yeah. The Lord sent forth his word yeah. and he healed them. Mm. And right now be filled with the healing, restoration, redemption, peace of yeah. God and the presence of God in Jesus' name. Yes. yes and everyone said that. amen. And I think Angela's put hers and I will open the windows of heavens for you and I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have enough room for it. Wow, put me to the test. She's like, I love that. Thank you, Angela. Put me to the test. <laughs> Interestingly, the test. that is also related to as we give, as yeah. we give to God, as we, you know, put God first in everything, including the wallet, you know. And so, you know, even Bright City Church is only funded by all the faithful and wonderful giving yeah. of its church yes, family and right. friends. And so I want to, that's a good point. I'm going to play this little reminder yes, about our giving. Here. And there's details of how you can give towards everything that we're doing here. God bless you. of how you can continue to give even when we're not meeting together and so just please go ahead and you can sort of find those details on the website etc and then um, yes i just want to say another hi to all those that continue to join us we've got teresa and bissy and oh, rosemary so welcome it's good that you've joined us today amen yeah now is there any issue there with the um it's looking <laughs> frozen on here i'm not sure why uh, let's it's just check we're connected we there. We are connected, Could aren't we? Be connected. Um, that's the volume. <laughs> da, 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 da. That's there. Yeah, Okay. Let us know if we're frozen because we're frozen on our screen, but we might not be. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Now, let me see. Are we frozen on the broadcast? Let us know because interest... Oh, frozen uh, here too, frozen. Jade. Yes, it says frozen. Okay, why is that then? Ooh. Let's um, see if we can unfreeze... We don't want to be frozen. Frozen is not good. We can hear you, but you're frozen. Ah, <laughs> ah okay. So you can hear. You can well, hear. that's good. Well, we'll, we'll go with the hearing and um, let's... It might be just a little bit of the internet. Just... Like, ah, it could be the cameras just dropped out there. Yeah, it looks like it made it may, maybe has done. Uh, here we are. Let's try this. We'll try again. Oh, there, oh, we, there are. we are. <laughs> now, why that clicked out, I don't know. Frozen. Frozen. We're back. We will not be frozen We're back, in 2021. Guys. We're back. Lovely. Frozen. Okay. So, um, just saying now. We're entering into, as we talked about, you know, how we start the year and we set these goals um, individually and as a church. So we want to start in in the way we mean to yeah. go on, yeah. and so. That's why we're starting with a week of prayer with fasting for those who who want to fast, who, who, who feel led to fast. And fasting um, might be just going without food for, for the week. It could be um, going without meat. It could be just going without something that reminds yeah. you uh, to 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 draw near to God, yeah. to, to get close to God. And so uh, I encourage you, this is a time of prayer. It's not dieting. <laughs> you know, if you just fast and don't, uh, don't pray, then, you know, that's dieting. And, uh, you know, good luck with that. But, uh, you know, this is prayer 
with fasting. Why prayer with fasting? Well, well, the Bible says that, you know, if we draw near to God, here's a wonderful promise to bring to God. Yeah. You said, if I draw near to you, Lord, you will yes. draw near to me. Yes. And so when I'm, I'm fasting, I'm saying, I want you. I want you <laughs> even more than this meal in front of me. I want you even more than this hunger yeah. pangs that, or for, for this. Or I want you even more than... Facebook or the internet, yeah. we're on Facebook, so don't, don't, don't cut out Facebook <laughs> Those distractions, just now. really, you know, we've been talking about distractions, haven't we? And what a great way to start the year, you know, is to just sort of lay aside all distractions. I mean, this is a great goal to even have is, you know, get into the rhythm of fasting and just setting aside time with the Lord. And fasting, you know, fasting, prayer and fasting is 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 exciting it is. because you're you're saying, right, I want the heavenly yeah. manner, the yes. heavenly food. Yeah. I'm expectant. Yeah, I'm right. coming and saying, Lord, I know that as I come to you and say, I want you even more than these things. You're, you're gonna you're gonna give me oh, something yeah. you're gonna That's give me right. a heavenly gift yeah. it's like when the um, the disciples came up to Jesus and they said Lord you haven't eaten anything come and have some food we've got some food and he said you know I have food mm. that you know nothing about he was talking about that heavenly food yeah. do you want a download yeah. a heavenly yeah. Yeah. impartation yes. from God that is the promise yeah. as we draw near yes. to him and said Lord you know when you seek me when you yeah. seek me with all your heart yeah. you know I'm going to give you something yeah. I'm going to give you something special and um yeah. yeah you always come out refreshed God speaks you know and it's and it's good just to sit and wait on the Lord and, and just listen and, and, and spend time listening to his voice, particularly at the moment. There's so much, you know, information going around. There's so much news and so much, you know, our, our heads are being bombarded, aren't they, with the news at the moment of what's going on around the world. But, you know, it's good just to sit, isn't it, and just listen. And Fasting listen. makes your prayer life like an atomic bomb. Ben's <laughs> quoting Pastor Joyce Lamb. Yeah, so the prayer... It um, it's, you know, be excited about what you're going to get, yes. not what you're missing out. I, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to what I'm getting from yeah. the Lord and what he's answering in our yes. prayers. Amen. I love what uh, Karen's put there. Cleanse my palate, Lord, so I can taste in you. Absolutely. Yeah, that's good. It's great. So, yeah, practicalities of the, um, the arise and shine. We did it at the start of last year and start of this year again. So we're going to have two more online meetings on Tuesday night and Wednesday night. There won't be any click, stretch or, un or um, unsubscribe this week. We're going to be concentrating on, um, on the Arise and Shine. We're going to be, you know, bringing our yeah, prayers yeah. And, and words from the Lord. Yes. So that'll be some yeah. Tuesday 7 till 8 and Wednesday 7 till 8. Not tomorrow evening, 7 to 8, but Tuesday and Wednesday night. Rachel and I will be here uh, leading. We hopefully will be joined by some as well, but we're believing God for great things. And yeah. then at the end of this week, come and join us as well on the Friday yes, prayer, yes. Zoom Friday prayer, yeah. where you know we're going to bring what God has been doing and yes, saying together yes. and finish with that prayer time. Yeah. Absolutely. So wonderful. Really excited about that. Let's um, continue to um, engage with God yeah. as we worship together. Let's worship him, mm. the source of every good thing in our lives. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We love you.
We are the bride. We're getting ready. We are. Get, are you getting ready? I'm getting ready. We are the bride. We are waiting for our King to return. And you know, it just feels like you know at the moment. And I, I talked a little bit about this even on the New Year's thing. That you know, there's such a shaking going on. There's such a sense of urgency. You know, Jesus is coming back. Mm. And um, I really felt even like during last year that you know, and I and I mentioned it even on on the New Year's Eve um, service about you know like. Last year was like a, 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 a line in the sand of those sort of birth pains of Jesus's return. You know, there's a sense that they're going to mm. increase and intense. And, you know, we, we need to be ready and get ready and praise God. He He loves us so much. He's He always challenges us. He's always showing us. He's always guiding us with his Holy Spirit, you know, what to do and how to get ready. And um, I had this word also, and I shared briefly, I'm not going to talk about it a little bit, it was the word buckle up. You know, I talked about it even buckle yeah, up as, as as a sense of like mm. you know you've got to get tight in with God buckle up because it's going to be turbulent ahead you know those things do get in more and more intense but you know God is with us he's going to take us through and he's going to show himself mighty he's going to show himself mighty 
through you and in you too in this next season that we're going through mm -hmm. but you know it's it is going to get turbulent mm -hmm. and that and that buckling up for me was almost like get in tight with with me get in tight with mm -hmm. jesus and go on this ride with him as we go forward as we journey on with god and i also felt like you know part of that journey you know and when we go on our journey and we know in hebrews it talks about you know running our race running our race well and to cast off throw off every single weight that hinders us that weighs us down mm -hmm. the sin that can entangle us and ensnare us because you know we need yeah. to travel light yes you know we need to travel light and mm -hmm. actually what we do Good. in life is we pick up baggage on the way mm -hmm. you know and and over the years we can find ourselves picking up more and more and more baggage and i felt like god was sort of saying it's time to declutter mm -hmm. you know we need to declutter we need to throw off stuff because it's mm -hmm. turbulent ahead we need to travel light we need to be close to the lord and we need mm -hmm. to sort of get rid of stuff that maybe we've been carrying for years and these bags and these suitcases of things that weigh us down because mm. we need to travel light. And I was reminded of when funny. Jesus sent the 12 disciples out mm. and he said, you know, go in, in, in my power and in my authority. And, and he's given us everything we need. And he mm -hmm. said, so that you can cast out demons, so that you can heal the sick, so that you can preach the gospel. And he said, but don't take anything on your journey. And I know he talked about, don't take a staff and a cloak and food. And, and I think it's that total dependence on God. But for me, don't take anything for the journey. You know, and as we step into this new year, let us be intentional about leaving behind things that we don't want to take full with mm -hmm. us forward because yeah. we want to go on the journey mm. you know traveling light and and i just and i and i and i had that word to declutter and anybody who knows me knows that i love to declutter i mean mm. I, I throw everything out because i i like to travel light i, I don't like hoarding things i don't like hanging on to things um I, you know my my house is quite minimal anyone who's seen myself and, and allison around the church we tend to throw things out and actually part of decluttering and and the key to decluttering your life is letting go to let go of things and and i i really feel that god is saying let, come on you know let go of things that you don't need for the next journey ahead because he's you know the old's finish and and letting go mm. of the old and that, remember i said old doesn't mean it was bad that what what we did before or it wasn't wrong it's just that the old finishes and something new comes and in order to be able to pick up on the new things we have to let go of the old and and, and it's it's intentional. It doesn't just happen with like, oh yeah, the old's gone and the new's come. We have to sit with the Lord and say, okay, Lord, come on, tell me of those things that I need to let go of and the baggage that I've been carrying. And I believe that there are a few things here that you know that the Lord was just showing me that we you know that we need to let go of because they're, they're, they're weights. And it says, cast off, throw off every weight, every weight, mm. everything that weighs you down mm -hmm. the sin that in so entangles you sin, and yeah. keeps your eyes fixed mm -hmm. on me and run the race before you and so these were some of the things that i felt like god was saying we need to to let go of offense you know offense will keep you in the past mm -hmm. because what happens with offense is we keep a record of wrongs and some people have got these bags of offense and wrongdoings that people have done against them and, they, and they're almost carrying like filing cabinets and, and every so often they get the mm. filing cabinet out and they pick out a, a file and they go over and over things that someone's done to them 20 years ago and the thing is these these records of wrongs are like filing cabinets. This is the picture I have in my head. They're, they're heavy weights. And actually, they just keep us sort of grounded. Offense keeps us grounded. And it can keep us bitter. And it can just keep us in the past. And, you know, let's, let's, let's forgive let's throw it off let's let it go go and yeah. so that we can be light and go light yeah. light for the journey ahead yeah. and so uh, that there was those things about offense unforgiveness is a big one let go you know forgive mm -hmm. we've got to learn to forgive when we hold on to unforgiveness it gets a root of bitterness in us and that bitterness just goes over and over and over we have to forgive actually unforgiveness against people it's sinful actually mm -hmm. to, to not forgive and so let go 
let mm. go and and forgive and move forward we'll you will be you'll things, be set free yeah. you, you know forgiving people gives you freedom because it disempowers the offense that you have taken on inside of your heart and mm. actually when we let it go it's like well i'm free that's with them and the lord now should we pray for folks to, we to can. let go and, and, and forgive now yeah yeah you yeah, can do that yes such a big thing. Yeah, this is this is from the Lord, yeah. and, and now it's time to forgive. Yeah, right. Let's together now. We just, with the Holy Spirit, will help us. We're going to let yeah. go, release, and forgive yeah. everything that, and person and yeah. situation that is causing you bondage and yeah. offense right now we ask you lord would yes. you reveal to every one of us together we're here together with you and asking you for that grace yeah. to see where we're holding any offense yeah. or holding unforgiveness yeah. and right now help us to choose yeah. to let go yes. and forgive yeah father every person right now there's forgiveness yeah. would you forgive that yeah. person yeah Forgive that person who hurt you. Mm -hmm. Forgive that person who said those things to you. Cover it. Let it yeah. go just as yeah. you were forgiven. Forgive yeah. and forget and, and let God deal with it. Yes. Thank you, That's Father. Right. We, we leave it behind mm. and we just leave it there. And we leave it at the cross, don't we? We leave, mm. we leave it with God. We cast our burdens. We cast it onto the Lord. And, and it stays there. And then we can move forward. Okay, the, other, the other things to let go of, there are a few here that I've got, is let go, letting go of unhealthy relationships. And I think that there Good. are people that have unhealthy relationships yes. and they can be like mm. soul ties. Those relationships can actually be quite controlling and manipulating and, and yeah. they can pull you back. Mm. And they are weights that we carry. We don't want them on the journey mm. unhealthy relationships you know let go of them learn to cut them off be discerning let mm. the holy spirit say do you know what this person is manipulating controlling this person has a hold on you this person has control over you mm. this person has a song tie over you let the holy spirit show you those things because mm. it can get you bound up mm. unhealthy relationships you know cut them off let them go mm. and, and and actually unhealthy relationships can can dull you you know it can dull you as a person spiritually even you know even people that are not walking in the same path that you're going That's you've right. got to go the opposite way you've got to run yeah. from it you mm -hmm. know he mm -hmm. who walks with the wise grows wise a companion of fools suffers loss it's a great proverb you know mm -hmm. walk with the wise walk with people who sharpen you walk with people who 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 pull you up like this not bring you down so so be discerning about relationships mm -hmm. and let go leave behind unhealthy relationships yeah. i remember having to do it when i first got married you know i was um, a student nurse and i had all these young nurse friends around me all the time and i got married and i had to make a decision and i felt it was from the lord you know what you've got to 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 sort of cut those relationships off not in a horrible way not in a negative way but just to make a decision i'm married now i'm on my journey with ian you know i'm a married lady i'm not going to you know hang out with all my single friends anymore and and it's just little decisions like like that that you know enhance our journey and we want to take the good things with us and leave the baggage behind and I want to encourage you maybe you're sitting there saying well I, I can't actually get away from some of the people that I would you know I I, I, I don't feel are, are um, a positive influence on my life and I think I would say to you you know give that to God give them to God don't carry the responsibility mm. of other people's lives mm. you know let let them go if it's a, if it's a spouse or a child and you sort of think well it's not easy don't don't carry it give that to God give them their you know the life of that person to them and and let go of that responsibility and maybe you're struggling with that mm. and you'd like help from somebody yeah um, because you know these things can be very difficult then you can always um you know, message, private message, the pastors here, uh, myself, Rachel, on uh, private messages or email the church if you need help to navigate some of these yes. things. And then it's let go of disappointment. Disappointment can just keep you in the past. It can just keep you going around in a circle of, I feel disappointed, I feel disappointed. Disappointment can lead to hopelessness. Hopelessness is just like you lack faith, you become dormant. Get Take the baggage of disappointment and just let go of it. Because mm. I, one of the things I've learned to avoid disappointment is stay close to God, pray about everything. And, and then actually, when you put your trust in God, it doesn't matter when when you can have those experiences of disappointment. Because, you know, if a door closes, you go, it's okay. 
that didn't work out that way. I know God's got something else. His timing is different. He's got something better. Or if you've been disappointed with a person, don't put your trust in people. Put your trust in God and you will never be put to shame and you will never be disappointed. Leave disappointment behind. Go free from it. And I'll tell you, you will, you will travel light. And I'd say there's another one. Let go of guilt and shame. God has forgiven you. He has healed you. He has restored you. You are a new creation. Don't live in guilt and shame. Let go of worry. Baggage of worry is huge. It's like these massive bags that we carry. Every day we can wake up worrying, worrying, fear. You know, the, the Bible says do not worry about anything. You know, don't be anxious for anything, but pray mm. about everything. You know, worry is just a nagging voice here. So mm. let go of worry. Let go of old ways. Now, this is really, this is one that I really think is important. When we talk about letting go of the old, it's really important that we let go of familiarity, to mm. let go of familiarity, because I believe that God wants to give you new tools. And this is a picture that I had. He's got a new toolbox for you. And, and the problem with familiarity is we want to keep using old systems, mm. old ways, old tools, old methods. And God's saying, I've got new tools for you. And these tools, they are an upgrade for you. They're an upgrade. So yeah. you've got to lay down mm. old ways, old things are doing. If I went to my granddad's toolbox, it wouldn't have a drill in it if it was 60 years old. But because there was no electricity. But you know what now Ian's got an electric drill. It works. It's it's faster. It's better. It's 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 an upgrade. And Mr. I just, DIY. Yes, when he does his DIY. <laughs> there is an upgrade for you. God has new tools and he's saying let go of the old things and familiarity kind of it, it, the problem with when we don't let go of familiarity is that we become sort of self-confident because we think that I'm so familiar with how we do this and we go through the motions that actually we become sort of strong in our strong in our own strength is that right mm. <laughs> strong in our own strength yeah and and right. actually God's sort of saying no you've got to be vulnerable let go let go of familiarity mm. um, a couple of other things because I know Ian's got a word as well and right. it's really important mm. um, let go of things like unhealthy habits procrastinating unhealthy diets unhealthy spending it's time to let go of those things and and you know and come into his presence and say lord continue to renew me transform me empower me that's why it's so important that we get into his presence mm -hmm. and and i would say let go of criticism and the critical spirit and throw it off negativity throw off negativity and speak life make that something that you're not going to keep can you know what it's like carrying bags of criticism Mm. criticism and judgmentalism and, wow. and 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 actually mm. you know jesus said look don't start looking at the speck in your brother's eye mm. when you've got a plank in your own and the things we don't want to carry these huge planks of judgment around mm. with us because it's heavy and we need to throw it off and mm. we need to speak life another proverb you will be satisfied yeah. and eat the fruit of your lips yes. meaning what you speak and what you confess yeah. and being positive, yeah. you, that will satisfy you and bring you life and joy. If you go around moaning, complaining, criticizing <laughs> and, and looking at all the negatives, that will be your life yes. and experience. But if you choose to declare, confess yeah. and walk yes. in the great and good things, you will enjoy that. That is for Put down the negative. Thank you, yes, darling. Yes, because criticism and judgment and, and just sort of, you know, fault finding, it, it just brings death and it doesn't bring life. And we, let's leave it in 2020. Yeah. Let's be positive because let's face it, we've had, we could have a lot of negative things to say, but let's just speak life. Let's mm. speak life. And, and actually, you will feel a freedom when you get rid of it. And actually, yeah. I can tell you the root of criticism is comparison and jealousy and pride. That's what it is, because we criticise to make ourselves feel better. Let's stop it. <laughs> no more. No more gossiping, <laughs> criticising, talking people down. Yeah, and, and, I, and, and I finally have said, let go of your own will. Mm. Ultimately, we want to surrender our lives to God. And, and, and actually carrying all the things that we want to do and how it's going to be, you know, it's heavy. Throw off every weight. God wants us to surrender to him. Look, listen, we're going into challenging, challenging times ahead. Like Jay was singing, like a bride, ready waiting for, for, her, waiting king. for her king. You know, let's get ready, church, and, and actually be intentional about changing and letting go. Mm -hmm. And then I just want to finish on a few things only a couple because I know Ian's got a word and this is what do we take with us 
So what's important to take with us on the journey? And I'm gonna say oil, the Holy Spirit. Take the oil of the Holy Spirit with you on your journey. Yes. And you've got the, the, the 10 virgins, the five that took the oil yes. and the two that didn't. Five were wise and five were foolish. Don't be foolish, don't be caught out. Get in close with the Holy Spirit mm. every single day. He is, you know, the helper, Jesus, the mm. helper, come to live inside of you to help you travel on your journey and run your race. Because it says, you know, he's coming back. And do you remember what happened to those those two groups? Mm. One, when they fell asleep and then they woke up because the bridegroom was delayed. One went off because it had run out of oil to go and find some oil. And while they were gone, the bridegroom came, Jesus returned, and he gathered up those five virgins that had oil in their lamp. And it says he welcomed them into the banquet, into the wedding feast, and it said he shut the door. And then when the five foolish ones came back and they didn't get ready, they weren't prepared, they, they were like, you shut the door. And he said, yes, I've shut the door now. That's mm. it. Mm. And, wow. and so be encouraged. Because it is an encouragement because actually getting rid of stuff and having a declutter is going to make you feel so free. Yes. And, um, you know, that that's just, you know, what the fruit of decluttering is. Amen. Amen. Thanks, <laughs> darling. Let's pray into that. Yeah. Lord, we thank you for this word yeah. and this, um, you know, this, this commendation from you to declutter. Yes. And Father, we pray now for your anointing mm. because you, you you give us the ability yes, to do what right. you ask us to do. And right now there's a divine uh, releasing yeah. of a grace to help yeah. you declutter in every way that's been talked about yeah. today. Just receive that from the Lord right now. Yeah. I receive it, Father. Yeah. Help me to declutter from yes. all these unhealthy, heavy things, but to take on the good, the yeah. oil, to take on those spiritual exercises yes. and disciplines that will get us fit and, yeah. and light yeah. and free and ready light. <laughs> to, to do all that you've called us to do in this day. Amen. 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 Just say amen, amen. and receive yes. in Jesus name. Thank you. Thanks, darling. So, so yeah, this is the theme, it seems, you know, and, and it's Jay's song, you know, yeah. we didn't ask her to, didn't. To, to prepare that one. Like a bride yeah. waiting for her king. Jesus is coming soon. Yes. Get ready. And, yeah. and Jesus is coming for a spotless bride, mm. for a glorious bride. Do you think the father would let Jesus turn up and the bride was was grotty, was dirty, was unready? No, no, no. There's 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 a glorifying and a preparing mm. of the bride happening right now. I yes, believe that right. what's happening in the world, and of course lots of people know and believe this, is God starting to shake and yeah. prepare the bride he and is. say, come on, it's time to declutter. It's time to get ready. It's time to put on the new beautiful garments that I have prepared for you, that I have for you. And so that's what this time is, even now that we've been going through where, you know, the church has left the building, it mm. seems. You know, God's kind of saying, hang on a minute, there's things that are important to me. There's things, there's a decluttering that I want you to do as you prepare to receive Jesus, the King. And so uh, that's indeed what's going on. So as we're seeking the Lord together, Rachel and I, you know, we're looking for that direction mm. that trajectory yes. um, that God has us on as a church and um, you know he reveals it to us yes. and and to the elders and we're moving forward I want to share that with you and um, yeah I, I was when we look at how God you know brought us the new name mm. uh, Bright City Church that was just before the lockdown, really, mm. uh, gave us that new name for this new season. And then the lockdown and the line in the sand yeah. and the new things. Yes. And so he gave us the name Bright City. And we know it's, you know, you are the light mm -hmm. of the world. Yeah. I, Jesus, am the light of the world. And I'm calling you yes. the light of the world. Now, shine. Yeah. Let your light shine. A city on a hill, a bright city shining brightly. Go forth, you know, in my power. And so we know this is what God has been calling us. We're excited about that. And, and we see even through the broadcasting, there's been some, you know, shining bright through the um, the social action, the food bank and other things. Uh, but I was 
I, I was caught by this scripture and I'm going to preach a little bit, share a little bit this message from here. And um, it's about shining. And so it says here in the word of God, this is not my words, it's God's words. It says, then your light will shine. Mm. If you do this, yeah. then your light will break <laughs> forth. Yes. Like the dawn. You, you talk about breaking light. You talk about shining. You know, who's seen the dawn light, the sunlight just break forth mm -hmm. and out and, and fill the sky? So it says, then your light will break forth like the dawn. Your healing will quickly appear. It says, then, in this scripture, then your light will rise in the darkness and your night, even your night, will become like the noonday, mm. like the middle of the day, the bright shining. Even your night yes. will be like that. So, so this is talking about shining. This is talking, and it's Isaiah 58. Many of you will, 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 will recognize that. So Isaiah 58. Um, now, God called Isaiah to speak to his people throughout the, the, this, the prophecies in Isaiah. It's, you know, 60 odd um, chapters, isn't it? But here at the start of this chapter 58, it says, shout it aloud. Mm. Do not hold back. Isaiah, yeah. shout it aloud. Do not hold back. Raise your voice like a yes. trumpet. Declare yes. to my people their rebellion and to the house of Jacob their sins. This is the start of this passage where it says, then your light will break forth. It says, for day after day, they, this is the, my people, God's people, Israel back then, and we're his people now, day after day, they seek me out. Mm. Okay, oh, they're seeking me out. That sounds all right, doesn't it? Um, they seem eager to know my ways. Okay, so they're seeking me out, they seem eager. And as if they were a nation that does what is right. Mm. You know, so they they're, they're, they seem to be seeking me out, eager to know my ways. And yeah. even you can imagine some people sharing this. We're eager to know God's ways and we're seeking him out. And, and as, as a nation that does what is right and has not forsaken the commands of God. So they're interested in the commands of God and the word of God. They ask me for just decisions. Mm -hmm. That's prayer. These people, these, these people that, that Isaiah is said, speak to them uh, and, 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 and reveal what is wrong. He's saying, well, these are the people. They're, they're praying for justice, asking me for just decisions. And they seem eager for God to come near them. They're, they're looking for that presence, intimacy, seeking intimacy, praying for justice. They seem... they they, they Wanting to follow the commands, etc., etc., and 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 they even say these people. They say, "Why have we fasted?" They say, "And you've not seen it." It seems, "Why have we humbled ourselves, and you have not noticed God?" So they're fasting, they're mm -hmm. praying, they're looking for justice, and 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 this is what God says. Yet on the day of your fasting, it says. Anyway, the prayer, the fasting, this time of, it says, you do as you please. You exploit your workers. You're quarreling. We, we talked about this baggage, quarreling, strife, striking one another. We think of bitterness, offense. We think of nitpicking. We think of selfishness. We think of, you know, looking after yourselves. You cannot fast as you do today and expect your voice to be heard on high. Is that the kind of fast I've chosen? Only a day for a man to humble himself. Only for bowing your head like a reed or lying in sackcloth and ashes. Is that what you call a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Well, God's saying, hang on a minute, there's something, is that right? Is that what you call? There's something that is wrong with what you're doing. He says, is not this the kind of fasting I have chosen to loose the chains of injustice Amen. to untie the cords so so untie those who are bound yeah. to untie those who are bound to set the oppressed free mm. to go out to set the oppressed free to break every yoke of mm. heaviness that's yeah. on the people out there mm. to break every yoke 
to share your food with the hungry, yeah. to give of, of, of what I've given you. Yes. You're blessed to be a blessing, to yes. now give it, to, to provide the poor wanderer with shelter. Yes. When you see the naked, to clothe mm. him and not turn away from your, your own flesh and blood as well. Mm. It says, then your light will break forth yes, like amen. the dawn. Your healing will quickly appear. Your right, your healing will quickly appear. Yeah. Then your righteousness will go before you. So, so you will shine. Yes. You will be known. It yes. will go before you, go ahead of you. And the glory of God, the glory of God will come down. And it says, will be your rear guard. Mm. God will protect Amen. you as well in, in this. There will be that protection from the glory of God. Then you will call on the Lord and the Lord will answer. You will cry for help and he will say, here I am. <laughs> and he will help you. If you do away with the yoke of oppression, yeah. with the pointing finger, the malicious talk we heard. If you spend yourselves on behalf of the hungry yes. and satisfy the needs of yes. the oppressed, then your light will rise yes. in the darkness and your night will become like the noonday. It goes on, it goes on. You will be, you will lay the old foundations. Mm. You will be called repairer wow. of broken walls, yes. restorer yes. of streets with dwellings. Yes. And it goes on. Wow, wow, wow. It goes on. This is for you and I as individuals yeah. and you and I as the church together. It's both individual and corporate. These principles, mm. the blessing that God has given us is to be given out, yes. is to be given away, yes. is to be taken yeah. to the hurting world yes. that is out there. Yes. The naked, the yes. blind, the poor, yeah. the, the stricken, bound the bound up, mm. the oppressed. Those who have no hope, yeah. it's not for us to just keep to ourselves. Yes. And this is why the God is saying, I want you, stop thinking about the building. I want you out of the building. I want you out of the building. I mm. want you out to the people. Yeah. Does that mean, I, I know Jared Cooper shared a word if you heard it. Does that mean we don't gather anymore? Of course it doesn't. No, we still, we gather, but we gather to be filled to go. We're going out. So we're thinking about we're going to the poor. Listen, very soon after this passage of scripture, a little bit further on in Isaiah 61, we hear the spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me. Yeah. Just a couple of chapters on. Yeah. Now, this is this this spirit. Here is the spirit. Yeah. It's not the spirit of a Lord. It's not the spirits, any old spirit. This is the yes. spirit of the sovereign lord it says the spirit of the sovereign lord is on me the lord has anointed me to preach good news yes. to the poor yeah to those who need it yeah to to, to bind up the brokenhearted yes. to proclaim freedom yes. to the captives to release darkness for for the prisoners mm. to proclaim the year of the lord's favor the yeah. day of, so so here we see this is the heart yes. of God yes. and, and, and the gospel of God. Yes. Now, yes. now, when God himself came mm. and turned up on the scene and he went out into the wilderness, he was anointed by the Holy Spirit. He went into the synagogue and he said, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me. I'm here, God in the flesh. Mm. And this is what I've come to Preach good news to the poor, to set the captives free. And he says, here, I, this, this is fulfilled in your sight. Mm. I'm here to do that. Yeah. And, and the people in the, in the building, in the church, in the synagogue, mm. they didn't like it. They, 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 they went after him. They went to throw him off the cliff. Mm. And, uh, you know, he, he, of course, God just moved him out through the crowd. He wasn't harmed because it wasn't his time. And he went, he left the building and went to the people. He went to the poor. He went to the fishermen, to the shepherds, to the prostitutes. Yeah. He went with the good news. Yes. He went out there. This is the good news. This is our calling. This is the beautiful bride, the calling yeah. of the body of Christ, yes. which is not separate from the head of Christ, which is Christ himself, the head of the body. And so then we think, 
Even when, when Jesus went to the cross to pay for our sins and equip us by the outpouring of the Holy Spirit mm. to continue his yeah, mission right. for, for the lost and the broken, yeah. the, the Spirit was poured out at Pentecost yes. and all of the disciples were there. They were waiting, they were waiting, they were told to wait. The Spirit was poured out and boom, they were out of the building. They were out and it said people from everywhere came and they were hearing the gospel being preached in their own languages. You know, there, there, there was there was a going out, a going out, a going out, a going out to the sea of humanity, yeah. the broken world yes. that needed yes. a savior, need the gospel, yeah. the broken world. So you, you get where I'm going with this. You know, God has a heart for the broken world. We have yes. the message for the broken world yes. and the broken people. Yes. He identifies himself with that broken, with the foreigner, the stranger, the outcast, mm -hmm. the orphan, yeah. the poor, the naked, the blind, yeah. the oppressed. Yes. And, and you know, when he first appeared, mm -hmm. Jesus himself first appeared, he wasn't even born. He was in the womb of his mother, Mary. And he first came and, and they came to the door of the inn. There was Joseph. We just heard the stories through the Christmas. And in the inn, in the this was this was a place to stay. This was a place where they had the money. This was a place where, you know, during that time of the they were taking the census. And, and, and so all the Jewish people, the ones who had money were in there because they could afford to pay for the nice accommodation and they were in. And there was the unborn child, God himself, how vulnerable and helpful, came to the door. Can, can I come in? I'm an unborn child. Can I be let in with my mum? She's unmarried. We're outcasts. I'm the God who, 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 who is connected and, you know, my identity is with the outcasts and the Jewish people who are in that inn. You know, may, maybe they said, you know, right, who's going to make room? Listen, we've got a pregnant um, woman out there she's just about to give birth. Can anyone give up their room? Can anyone, any of you Jewish people, you people of God, you know, who know the word, who study the word, who love the Lord? Would you give up? And, and, you know, doesn't seem like anybody did. They said, well, who's going to do it? There was a silence. And the innkeeper said, sorry, there's no, no room. You know, nobody, nobody will make room for the pregnant, unmarried teenage girl and the unborn child. That child was God. If they had made room, what would have happened? If they'd have said, come in, oh my goodness, come in. You know, let us love and help you as our God tells us to and shows us to throughout the scriptures, come in. And, and you can have my room. I'll go in with this guy and, and what have you. You can have, you know, would the angels of glory would have flooded into that place. Mm -hmm. What would have happened to those people in that inn? Uh, you know, what, what their life would have been transformed. They would have encountered the glory of yeah. God, all the heavenly host. But they missed it because they no, they, they were just they were thinking about themselves, their own religion, their own religious thing. They weren't thinking about the outcast. They weren't really living that out. Yeah. So listen, what's God calling us to do? It's to bring the message out to the people. How are we doing for time? Mm -hmm. Kind of come to the end. You know, we recently, we were invited to bid for, um, you know, substantial amounts of money that the government were making available for the homeless uh, at this particular time, particularly during COVID, where they wanted the homeless to be off the streets and everything. So we were asked to apply. We were approached by the council to apply for this funding. And we, we, we applied you know, to the government for certain pots. And one, one of the projects that was outlined in great detail, we had to do it quickly, was to, to make Bright City Church, uh, the Lower Hall, into you know, a, a day centre, a care centre for those who are broken and poor, lonely, who, who are out there, outcasts, whatever, to come in, building on the work of Vinnie's Diner and the... Um, and the food bank, the beacon centre, but a centre where people could have love, hope, 
care the gospel, the good news, where they would get food, where they would get um, help with their laundry, where they would get advice, all sorts of things. That is the, the vision of the Beacon Centre as well. But um, now, we didn't get that particular award at that time, but we got another one which was connected to it of 65,000 to provide, if you like, education training for those who are kind of a bit destitute and need that lift up. And we're, we're implementing that right now. We're putting it into, into plan. But that vision of, use, of throwing open the doors of Bright City and, and, and going out to the community, to, to the broken, to the, those who are hurting, to those who have no hope. That is the trajectory, by the way, of this church. If you want to know where we're going, if you want to know the vision, this church is going out to the broken, to the people. They were, the pe they were God's people. They were Jesus's people. The prostitutes, the, I've said it already <laughs> anyway. So, so and, 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 you know, they are the people that are turned into the world changers by God and transformed, uh, like many that we've heard. Anyway, that is the trajectory of Bright City Church. And so these gifts and the downloading that we're given and the, the in incredible power of the Holy Spirit is for the lost, is for the broken, is for it's not to be kept to ourselves, but to be given out. Amen. Amen. So if you want a little glimpse of where we're going, um, you know, we'll continue to, to hear what God's saying. But imagine it. Imagine a, a, an incredible center mm. that people just know, hey, go down there. You can get, you know, acceptance, love, food, help and, and having a beautiful center. And we had the Pregnancy Crisis Center that we're, you know, building on and starting. So, you know, we're starting the Pregnancy Crisis yes, Clinic, yes. domestic violence, you know, help in the Beacon Centre, yes, all of these things. So we're looking for more of those streams. And of course, the gospel of Jesus being preached online. And, and I love the fact that this week, I think Helen Chilsbeck sent me an article and it was from in the Times newspaper. And the headlines was that teenagers turn to God during pandemic. And it was a little article to say that some teenagers, you know, they've really been tuning in online to church broadcasts and faith broadcasts and really reconnecting with their faith and, and sort of searching. So we know that also the message of the gospel is going to preach, be preached throughout all the earth, as it says. In Amen. Matthew. And, and then it says... The end will come. End Jesus will come. Will come. Jesus I had a, come. A, a lovely report from yes. Pastor Fanny and Mary. Yes. They said that through the broadcast that they've been doing as yeah. well, and I believe theirs are, are transmitted across to uh, Africa. Well, of course, these go uh, anywhere that they, they, they can around the world. But there have been salvations, mm. encouragement, yes. healings, you know, testimonies. Uh, so, so the gospel is being preached. Yes. It's it's very exciting, yes. and it says, "Then your <laughs> light will break forth like the dawn." Yes, come on, guys. And um, bright city's light yeah. will break forth and your is light. breaking forth. Your light. <laughs> you, know. you are bright city. I'm bright city. Without you, there is no bright city. We are, we are the, the children church. of God, the church. <laughs> And we can see even that there has been a, a beginning of yeah. the breaking forth. It seems that, you know, suddenly, in, in a sense, you know, the church is coming to the fore yeah. within the town, yes. within, you know, it's being known, yeah. talked about, referred yeah. to in the press, in the local press, in the council. So uh, we continue on this trajectory. Mm. We continue with what God is doing. Yes. And, um, you and, know, and, we're and, excited. And, and we know that, you know, we're entering into these last days and there will be an, an end time harvest. It's just a word that the look is an end time harvest, end time harvest. There is, you know, it's about now gathering, you know, gathering the people. Us going yeah. out, into, uh, out gathering. into, there is going to be a great gathering, a great harvest. And actually one of the, when we were on a walk the other day, Ian said to me, what would you do if loads and loads of people got saved? What if thousands of people got saved? What would you do? And I was thinking house church, house church came into my heart. But anyway, that's another, that's another thing. I believe that there will be a movement of house churches. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So anyway, it's exciting, exciting. Yes. Thank you to all those yes, who you. are involved as well. and have been helping out so much. Yeah. 
uh, in the projects as well and they will continue by the way we are looking for more volunteers for even the new development <laughs> of the project we need volunteers to you know supervise and be in yes. on the the training project which now you know Tanya is helping it's through Ashford together as well yes. And Tanya's helping us very much with that one. She's employed by Ashford Together, and so that's exciting. But we need volunteers who are going to be available to, you know, mentor and come alongside those who are training. So bless you. And uh, anything else to say, darling? No, I think that's it. Have a blessed day. We're going to worship as we go out because it's good to worship. And yeah. Just give thanks to God and come into his presence. You know, it's exciting what is ahead. Hold on tight. Thank you, Lord. Hold on Let's tight finish in prayer and then yeah. we'll finish with the word. Lord, we, we are excited. We're excited, you know, even when forces try to lock the church down, Father, we, by your spirit, mm. we feel moved, yeah. encouraged. Yes. And we feel we're breaking out. Yeah. We feel we're exploding out. Yeah. We, we feel that you're calling us out and and expanding us just like you do lord nothing can repress your kingdom nothing yeah. can suppress you and yes. and your your kingdom father bless us all yes. inspire us yes. fill us afresh yes. as we serve you and glorify you in this day yeah. in jesus name amen god bless you Have all a good one where where arise and shine rise and don't shining. forget we'll see you tuesday night and Wednesday night, we'll come and join praying. us. And Friday night for prayers on Zoom. We'll keep you updated with the details of those. God bless you God all. Bless you. Enjoy this worship as we go out. <laughs>
God said to Ezekiel, see this valley of dry bones. And Ezekiel saw the valley of dry bones that represented the people of Israel. In a dry time, in a time when they were oppressed and in a place where they were not used to. But God looked at those dry bones through Ezekiel and said, I will put breath into you. I will put sinews and flesh onto you. And you will know that I am the Lord. And I say, live. 